Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Mask AI, that is Topaz Mask AI. I've been discovering some new ways of using it more efficiently and quicker, and I wanted to share those with you today. So um, I picked this particular image up because I've had some uh, comments, people saying like, uh, there was one particular video I did uh where I replaced the sky and somebody said, well, can you pick a little tougher sky? Well, I figured this particular sky is really challenging with this tree here, right? You got to admit that this is going to be a tough image to cut this sky out because we have a lot of holes in that tree that need to be fixed. So we're going to take this image from here and turn it into here. Uh, is this the perfect sky to replace it with? No, but this is not about the perfect sky. This is about how to effectively use Topaz Mask AI. So let's get started. I'm so happy to show you these new things that I found using this piece of software. So let's get going. I'm starting out in Photoshop, but you could just as easily start out in Topaz Studio 2 and launch Mask AI from there, or you could start out right inside of Mask AI and replace this guy right inside of Mask AI. That will work too. I'm going to show you my workflow. This is generally how I work. I use Photoshop as my hub and I send things out to plugins from there. So I've already duplicated my background layer so we can work non-destructively. I'm going to send this image into uh, Mask AI. We're going to replace the sky inside of Mask AI because there's some really good tools for marrying the new sky to the original image. And I'll show you that. They're really interesting. You're going to love it. And also I'm learning new tips and little techniques for working with Mask AI. And I think you're going to enjoy these new tips because I've been working with this for a while and I'm starting to really get the hang of it. Okay, so we're going to come up here to Filter and come to Topaz Labs and we're going to pick Mask AI right here and we're going to go ahead and launch that. As soon as it opens up, we'll get to work and it opens up really fast. Make sure you have the latest version of Mask AI, which I believe this is the latest version 1.1.0 because they've added this uh, auto detect sky. Now check this out. I'm going to go ahead and click this. I'm going to click this. And I'm experimenting here. I'm not going to do anything else, but let that sky be detected. I don't care how great of a job it did. I'm not really concerned about it. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Compute Mask. And we'll see what happens here. And it takes it a few seconds. This is real time. Um, and Mask AI works really fast. i got to save for the quality of mask it gives you. All right, so... This is the, the default view where you see the uh, two images on your screen, and that's generally how, generally how I like to work, okay, with the two images on the screen. The image on the left is the tri-map. This is what Mask AI uses to make calculations. Green is for keep, the red area is for cut, and the blue area is for calculations. Now, it missed a lot of different spots here, but I don't care. I'm going to show you some nice tips and tricks how to really take care of this, and it makes masking easy. The image on the right shows us the cutout sky with the transparent background. That's what the checkerboard pattern is. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is replace the background. So we're going to click on background and click on image here. And now it's going to open up my file browser after I click upload image here. And all I have to do is point this to where my uh, skies are at, my replacement skies. And I happen to have them inside of this pictures set here and I have some skies that Mac Fun now Skylum gave me free uh, they were offering these with Luminar I believe at one time so I got those free and a lot of people have got them free so I'm gonna go to the blue skies collection the skies in here are okay they're not fantastic but I'm just gonna find one it looks fairly decent um, maybe this guy right here let's try it and let's just click open and there's the sky. Now, I know it doesn't look perfect, but we are not done. Oh, by the way, what I want to do here is the image on the left. You can shut the tri map off right here by just clicking here so we can actually see. Because I like to have both images up so we can carefully examine if we're, if we're missing anything, if we have to add something in our sky replacement. Okay, and we can zoom into the image. But before I do, the first thing I like to do is... Well, now that we're in the background section here, let's go ahead and see where it says adjust background or foreground. You can adjust either the background or foreground or both, which is really cool. What I want to do is try to marry up the background to uh, the image on the left because we've got to get that scene 
pretty similar for this uh, replacement to look right. So I think it needs a little bit more exposure. So let me go ahead and make a few tweaks here. I'm not going to go too crazy here or the video would take too long. But maybe right around there I might warm the sky up just a little bit to match the other, other image. Just warm it a little bit and I think that's looking pretty good. I might just pull my highlights back a little bit so I'm not clipping clipping any highlights. Okay, so and I'm not saying this is the perfect sky to replace it with. This is just a tutorial to show you how awesomely this thing works. And then you take your time and pick the perfect sky for your image. All right, but there we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is come up here to Edge and click on Edge. And I find this is a very important step. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Watch the edges of the image here. I'm going to take the foreground recovery and start to move this up to the right. And notice how things get really nice and clean on the edges of the image. And a lot of times I'll take it the whole way up. I'm going to start out by not going quite the whole way, but right around here. We can go back and retweak this later. Now that I'm in on the image here, if I hold the space bar down, see I get the little hand tool. I'm going to start with this side of the image here. And what I'm going to do is I'm on the compute brush. And the only brush I'm using is the compute brush. This is a little tip that I just found. And I really like it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to start with this area right in here. Okay, so look over here. And this is where it's nice to have the two images because you can compare what's on the left to what's on the right. See, I'm missing this area right here, right? So I could either paint here or I can paint on this right here. It doesn't really matter. And when I do that, and it takes a few seconds because I'm in the, um, what am I in the... Uh, the AI model. So let's let's click on mask right here. You can see I'm in the AI model. Now I've heard a lot of people say don't use the AI model when you're uh, refining your mask because it takes too long. But I found out use it. The first time you use it it's slow but then it starts to speed up for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because it's learning things. Okay. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller with the left bracket key. You can use your left and right bracket keys to make this larger and smaller. Now watch, I'm just going to paint over this area that it missed, right? And check this out. It's pretty quick, right? Look, it fixed that right up. Now I can paint over this area and here. And see how it just fills that in? All I'm using is this compute brush. And again, this is a tutorial, so I may miss some spots here. But if you take your time, believe me, you can get pretty much a perfect mask out of this thing. So I'm just looking for areas that it that um, mask AI missed. And I can tell by the skies, it's a slightly different color. But you can see it just cleans it right up, right? Now I'm holding the space bar down and I'm dragging over here. I'm going around and just hitting all these little areas in here like this. But look how it just cleans it right up. Isn't that really great? And I just discovered this today to use the compute brush, believe it or not. So this may revolutionize the way you use Mask AI. I'm finding this is the secret weapon to make this program work pretty easily for you. And just look for areas that it missed. So I, I could have went and, you know, when I made the initial tri-map, I could have went and... Um, you know, filled in every little area, but I, I didn't because I figured I'm trying to save time here. And this is real time. And again, I'll probably miss some areas here. And I'm looking at this part of the tree right here, which is right here. And see, there's some branches here. It missed. So watch, I can just come over these branches and paint and watch. See, they all come back. Isn't that cool? And look, it missed a few little branches here. So I can paint on either side of the image. It really doesn't matter. And watch, they come back in. And so that's really nice. And uh, again, I'm just looking for areas that I missed. Why well, miss a few areas? I can almost guarantee you my name's Dave Kelly. I miss things. I am not perfect, guys. And I'm going around the edges here a little bit. But I find this is pretty easy to do. Just take this uh, composite brush. It's the blue brush. And just, you know, paint away. And just look for areas that, that the program missed. Like right in there. See, it cleans it right up. And I can see there's some water in this image. I might have to retransform this a little bit because, and I'll show you that here in a second. Because I don't want any water out there because I think this tree is up on a hill, in my opinion, if, if I'm correct. So I'm just going to paint over this tree a little bit. 
and then look at your grass and make sure everything looks good. Let's swipe across here. But look at that grass. It is perfect. And did it miss anything in here? I can paint over this again right in here. Yeah, and look at, look at things just start to pop back in. Things will just magically reappear, but it works really, really well. See, here's a little bit of a uh, limit miss right there. And yeah, it comes back in. Okay, so that's pretty good. I think I'm good. Now, let me zoom back out. And now let's go to a single view so we just see the image by itself. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And uh, now it goes back to the original picture, right? So just come up here to this red apple right here and click Keep. And there's your sky replacement right there. Now let's make it a little bit larger. And like I said, I'm, there's some water down here showing, right? And if you didn't want to see that, all you have to do is go back to background and click transform and check this out. I can just pull this down like so and get rid of that water in there. And then I can pull up here a little bit. Yeah, and that is pretty much it. And then when you click transform again, you're good to go. Now, I think everything looks really good here. Um, am I missing? Let me go back to transform one more time. I thought I saw something there. I think it's just my mind playing tricks on me. Let me click transform. Oh, that's the sky. I saw this right here. It's part of a cloud. That's what I saw there. And now I'm back to the original image here, okay? So watch, I have to click here and go back to keep. Okay. Whenever you uh, come out of transform, it goes back to the original image. Just come back up here and click on keep and you're good to go. And I'm glad these little things happen because I'm like, what happened? And they'll happen to you. So remember that. Embed this in your mind. If, if your original image comes back, just come up here and click keep. And I just see a few little spots in here that I might need to fix. And just like so. But you notice now that the, uh, even though I am in the, um, even though I am in the, um, Compute mask mode, and I'll go back to mask here so you can see it. I'm in, com or the AI mode, I should say. If I've been saying compute, I meant AI. Sorry, I'm a little excited because this is working so well. But it, it works faster. The, it seems to speed up as you, as you go along here. And that's basically it. Now, a couple things you can do here. When you're done, you can come up here to file, and you can come to save as... And you can save this as a transparent image, as a composite image, as a mask only. You can save it as a tri-map. I'm going to be sending mine back into Photoshop, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Cancel for now. And let me show you one more thing. What if we needed to make some further tweaks on our image before we send this out to Photoshop? Now, we can uh, work on the foreground. I could mess around with the exposure if I felt the exposure needed to be changed or any of these adjustments. If I don't want to alter anything, I can just double click any one of the names and it gets us back to the default position. Uh, and again, we can work on the foreground or background. But what if I wanted to change the saturation in the background image, like the sky was a little too saturated? I can come here and click background and then work with our saturation. So watch, I can pull my saturation back a little bit and get this thing looking just right. Now, I love these controls inside. And then click apply when I'm done. Now, I have choices here. I can send it as a transparent image or a composite. I've already replaced the sky, so I'm going to send it back as a composite image. I'll click composite and now we're back into Photoshop. Let's click the eyeball here for the uh, layer that we just sent back into Photoshop. So here is the before and here is the after. So I mean Mask AI did a great job. Is it perfect? Probably not because I went rather quickly here. If I would have taken my time I'm sure I could have got pretty much a perfect mask out of this. I wanted to show you some of these new techniques that I'm working with using that uh, compute brush. I used to use the uh, keep and cut brush. It sometimes could get a little cumbersome, but this compute brush is working fantastically. And I think I cut my, uh, my masking time down dramatically. Um, so this is working out really well. And I want to share all these tips, tricks, and techniques with you, my YouTube subscribers and viewers. I appreciate you all. And I just want to give back to this community. So there you go. Topaz Mask AI doing a fantastic job on a really tough image to cut a sky out of. Topaz Mask AI. The more I use this software, the more I'm learning. And I just want to share it, as I said earlier, with all my subscribers and viewers and give back to this community. Um, 
Is this the perfect sky replacement for this image? No, but that's not what this tutorial is about. This tutorial is about how to effectively use uh, Topaz Mask AI to get a sky cut out as quick as you possibly can and get it replaced. And using the features right inside of Topaz Mask AI is fantastic. As you can see, that foreground and background adjustment really helps you get your images matched up with each other and I really enjoy that. It really helps and cuts your sky replacement times down. Uh, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Hey, thanks for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.